Okay, what, what we're doing here is we're loading in, uh, we're gonna make use predominantly of the Panda library and try to see the functionality of that library. And we're going to use the Titanic tree data set. And for the purposes of getting the data in, I'm going to, okay, make available R in this uh, Google Colab Python notebook. So R uh, is activated. And then we're going to use uh, the install package PASWR to load in Titanic data. Uh, that data set now is sitting. We can see it. We can see the structure of the data. So we have the passenger class. We have uh, survived name, so on, all the uh, key data that's there. To make it available in the Colab so that we can run Python code over this, if I write .csv Titanic tree and give the name, then that will appear here. So initially when I opened the folder right here, right, if we were looking at uh, the uh, table of contents, but if I want to see what data that can be read, what data, data is available in the Python notebook here, right? Um, I'm looking in the content folder, right? How do I know that? Well, if I run this command, it points me at the content uh, folder. Now we've written out Titanic tree CSV, so that's available here. And then um, we want to, very importantly, if you want to use uh, Python, do some data transformation, right? Um, and uh, do some numerical operations, do some graphing visualization and apply um, again some visualization um, using the matplotlib. We need to load those libraries in. So the way we do that initially here is we import the Python libraries and they're available. And so the functions that are available that available in pandas and numpy and seaborn matplotlib we have then at our disposal. Okay, so to read in the Titanic tree into the Python notebook, uh, we must take it from here and then introduce it in. So we're gonna call it Titanic tree and we have this uh, pandas function, read the CSV file that's known or is here as an object as Titanic tree. And then if I want to view it, Titanic uh, tree dot head, and we get the first 10 observations and if uh, I found something that let's say is an artifact of maybe some uh, manipulation that I've done on R that I let's say want to drop uh, the first column there, we can say, okay, drop column equal to unnamed colon zero. And if I run that, it drops out. And then we can look at our data again and we have our P class and so on, right? So it's all set up. Okay, and we can do some kind of uh, preliminary observation of what's in there and the first three lines of code there. We covered that the, in the previous video, right? So uh, let's go to the table of contents uh, and we'll come down to, we were looking at histograms and um, we, for instance, uh, pandas, normally we use matplotlib and seaborn for graphing but there is some uh, graphing available in the pandas library also. So we have some commands. Uh, if we run this DF histogram, now we have to make sure that uh, we call uh, Titanic tree DF. So somewhere in there, there is a DF equal to Titanic tree. So maybe I should just run that first. Uh, okay, so I'll just put in a cell and run that. Okay, so let's get back. So before, let's put a new line of code in and say, okay, DF, which is just the name of an object. And we're going to say, look, Titanic tree, make that equal to Titanic tree and run that. Okay, so from here on in, rather than keep repeating Titanic, Titanic, Titanic tree, we'll just say, look, DF, short for data frame. And then when I run DF histogram, DF histogram survived and P class, you can kind of see the type of graphing. It's not the most elegant, but it's not awful. 
uh, that's available with the pandas uh, library, right? So for instance, if I took those maybe step by step, took the second line, is it the second line I have? Uh, PF? Yeah, let's take the second one and just run that and say, look, I want to produce a histogram. And then I want to observe uh, the survival for uh, females and males and bifurcate so that we split it up for the different uh, uh, genders, right? Um, we can use this syntax here. And if I wanted to make, let's say, for the sake of argument, the, the graphs a little bit bigger or maybe a bit smaller, right? Maybe we might say, look, they're a bit too big and do it again. We can redimension it and you can keep adjusting that until you think you're just maybe at the right level, right? So maybe eight, five looks, looks okay. Maybe you want to go eight, four. Your graphs don't always have to be that big. So you have some leverage here, like a gauge in determining the size of the figure. And then you can copy that save that image, copy that image, and put it into a Word document, right? Likewise here, we can make some adjustment, right, in terms of the size of the figures and so on. Um, and we're using the uh, syntax of pandas so that we get uh, df dot uh, hist, right? So we're invoking uh, this command to produce a histogram. And we're saying, look, we want to look at survives, but we don't want to look at it just bifurcating it based on gender. We actually want to look at survival rates for Sherbrooke, Queenstown and Southampton. These were the points of embarkation um, on the Titanic, right? And uh, you can see here, a lot of people uh, who embarked in Sherbrooke, they, their prospects seem to be a bit better than the people in Queenstown or Southampton. Uh, if you look at this a little bit more closely, what you typically would have found is there was more first class and second class passengers who boarded at Sherbrooke compared to the other, uh, the other two um, ports. So uh, again, basically what we're trying to do here is explore a bit the ability of the pandas, but we're using the Titanic tree data set. We could look, maybe you might say that looks, uh, we could do better here if we made our graphing just a little bit bigger. Okay, so we can change the figure size. And okay, and maybe we can say, look, um, when we look at the age distribution, again, we're doing histograms. So we're getting kind of frequency of certain age bins, age buckets. And um, we're doing it for uh, uh, females who uh, survived and those who drowned. So the zero one is the survival, right? And then we have the, we've bifurcated for the gender as well. So it's, it becomes a nice way sometimes when you have to uh, stream out certain populations or cohorts within an overall uh, data set uh, that you can do this type of graphing. Again, we saw uh, in Tidyverse, uh, the kind of analog of that and, kind of what you do in Tidyverse, you can sort of replicate it in the pandas, in the matplotlib, in the seaburns and so on. Again, I would say Tidyverse, the ggplot2 is a very elegant, um, very elegant package with very elegant uh, graphing, uh, maybe slightly better than what's available. Although seaburn also is really nice. Again, if you read the, the command here, what we're basically saying Let's uh, take uh, the, um, the data set that member DF denotes the data set and we want to break down, look at age and we want to produce a histogram. And then you could say I want 16 bins, but you might say, no, I actually want five bins, right? And you know, you have one, two, three, four, five. Now you're getting, uh, again, this is kind of the, given the huge community of people who participate in developing these packages, right? Uh, there's lots and lots of uh, innovation. So I might want to look at age up to 100, but of course there's no point because nobody was in that age bracket. If I break this down uh, to 20 bins, I might get more definition there. 
and you can see look people in this age bracket were non-existent so i just really need you know people up to the age of 80 right and that works perfectly fine right so you can shape these uh diagrams and graphing to suit your particular what it is you require to present whether you were writing a business report or you know doing an assessment whatever again uh the matplotlib uh, provides us also with and seaborn provides us the seaborn piggybacks off matplotlib um and um we were able to do here another sort of histogram, if you like, and again, a frequency distribution. And again, this is a more stylized way of presenting, okay, look at the age of the passengers. If you look at the Titanic, most people were kind of in their early 20s. So you had a lot of economic migrants and they were leaving not so much because, um, you know, they were tourists, uh, they were leaving because of economic imperatives. Um, and again, the most mobile group here are those people in their early 20s. Now, today, if you get on a Ryanair, uh, you know, um, you're probably going to find a similar distribution. The bulk of people, not so many children, but a few. There are older generations, but a lot of people who are very eager to travel are a uh, younger generation. Uh, maybe we might find a, a little bit more skewed to an older age bracket today as traveling has um, become kind of more democratized and there's bigger volumes, but uh, probably an over-representation of people in their early 20s. So we found, find that also here with the Titanic Tree data set. Now, as always, when you go through any data sets, uh, you're keen to discover, are we missing data, right? So we have data on P-class, we've data related to people's survival, uh, the you know the names of the individuals the gender the age so on and it turns out we have a lot of information missing just there's no reference if you go back into the again we can look at it if we double click here in titanic tree we can actually take a look at the csv file uh, and if you come down to age there are ages now not in the first few there but as we go through Right, there are quite a few cells that are not populated. There's one, for instance, just it wasn't recorded the age of the individual. So maybe if you're young and you didn't want to reveal that you're only 15 and you're traveling alone, uh, you may not have recorded it. And then uh, back in the day, people's ages, people didn't, uh, you know, they, um, you may not know exactly what date you were precisely born on, right? Depended on how literate your parents were, and then the, you know that you're depending a lot on church records and baptismal dates, maybe as opposed to um, the, the day you were born, and maybe you weren't born in a hospital, right? That might have been also not that unusual. So formal documents uh, might have been a little bit scarcer. So age is missing here, and that's just um, probably uh, you know a contemporary type issue we don't see that today we've seen most individuals we would expect would we'd know we'd have documentation relating to their age but that was something that was there on the titanic uh you might say okay we'd like to look at just taking age alone and determine the number of missing cells and we can use that using this panda uh command so say isolate age on its own from the titanic data set remember df means titanic tree and then you're saying using sum up those cells where the, the cell is not populated. So rather than do the full list, if you just want to isolate one attribute and to get a summary statistic that told you how many uh, cells were not populated, we had it there. Um, we, if you were doing some engineering, it's sometimes you, um, when you're doing modeling, right, part of the pre-modeling, which is also part of the exploratory data analysis, is you do feature engineering. So you might say, look, if we were missing age here in 263 cells, rather than just waste that data, we might fill the data in with the median age. Now, I don't apply it here. Uh, because I didn't want to change the original data set, but maybe uh, 
when you're doing your assessment or somebody who's doing some kind of modeling in terms of an assessment uh, that they were going to submit, uh, you might want to play around a little bit with the missing date and say, rather than throw away 263 rows, we might make those rows usable if we put in the median. Median is kind of like mean, but it it is mean as average. Median refers to the typical age, right? So median refers to the typical age. And then uh, we would maybe, okay, another way of getting a look at our the distribution of age to do a count, right? Again, there's different schema here. We could create 20 bins, right? And if you want to put in some more label count, passenger count or something, if you want to edit that, and you wanted that to appear in terms of the label, right? You have it here. Okay, so these are all nice graphing capability that's uh, there built in to the analysis. Uh, one last thing then, and then might, um, again, we did that, we looked at what proportion uh, of, um, we're looking here at the uh, survived, and then we're taking that as um, uh, the number. So it's basically, if we took the 263, that are missing and then divided by the number of uh, passengers, right? The length of the number of passengers, then we get uh, this 20%. In other words, if I took the 263 missing uh, ages and divided by the number of passengers, right? Or the number of observations, that's 20% of your data. So if you were to throw away that amount of data, that's 20% of the data that is uh, being eliminated. And that's why you might prefer if you're doing modeling, rather than throw away cells, throw away rows that have a few missing cells, you might just say, look, we'll throw in the median to populate that cell so that we're not wasting a lot of richness in our data set.